Recovery is stupendous. Achievable. Hope. Freedom. 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 Empowering. It's unique to everyone. It's a journey, not a destination. Getting a new lease on life. It's finding restoration after you fall down. Recovery is having the freedom to enjoy life. For me, it was finding a way to really love myself. My recovery is possible in part because of my own sense of purpose. Welcome to Montana's Peer Network Recovery Talks Podcast. I'm Jim Haney. And I'm Leah Wetzel, Montana's Peer Network Recovery Coach. Well, thanks so much for tuning in to another episode today. I'm a little bit hoarse today, so I'm going to have, Leah's going to do a lot of the, a lot of the talking, I think. <laughs> That's okay. I don't know what happened. I just woke up and my voice is all scratchy, but Last week, Leah, you attended the Healing Together Conference, and I remember when you first asked me about attending, it was quite a while ago, right? It was like a couple of months ago, maybe, when you first? Oh, yeah, I've had my eye on this for good for maybe in five months. Yeah, yeah, I think it was quite a while ago, and you know, and I checked it out and I, I was like, you know, yeah, this would be, that would be good for her to go. And so um, that's what we're going to talk about today on the podcast. That's what Leah is going to mostly talk about. I'm going to ask her questions and <laughs> learn about it. But um, yeah, so it's called the Healing Together Conference. And it was out in California. Tell us about it. Tell us what it is and uh, inform us. Well, yeah, I'm more than honored to to fill you and our listeners in on this um, amazing one of a kind conference. Um, and so, shout out to the developers, um, uh, Native Dads Network. There was White Bison. Mm-hmm. Kateri Koyas was there mm-hmm. speaking. There was Native Wellness. Theta Nubris and Jillian Joseph and their crew, and then the Native American Fathers and Families Association, Al Pooley himself. Mm. And of course, Mike Duncan, the executive director of Native Dads and his Native Dads family was there. And then they had a special guest. They had uh, Superman there as well. Ah, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And that's cool. Yeah. It was so, so this is the first time that they've all collaborated together like this, as far as I know, and from what they were saying. And um, so I guess from what Mike Duncan said in the beginning, during the opening ceremony, that they started getting worried. Nobody was getting tickets. And then he said one week, boom, they were sold out. He waited a little bit longer and then boom. And so luckily they, they went virtual because I would not be able to take, you know, that much time off at this moment, but we, they were able to go virtual and then the eighth judicial veterans court shout out to Kathy for setting that up and judge best but they offered a venue for us to watch it in nice nice and so I see this was a national wellness healing conference and I'm looking at the uh kind of the overview of the agenda you were mentioning different individuals with the, the sponsoring organization so obviously this had a this was a Native American theme, but not, it wasn't exclusive to Native Americans. It was open to all, correct? It was most definitely open to all. And I think there's that universal outlook amongst um, our healing Native uh, recovery wellness folks that all that are feel that connection within Indigenous Uh, ways you know our ways are meant for everybody and um, there's also that universal outlook that you know if someone's on indigenous land whatever indigenous land that might be 
of course you're going to feel that connection with our ways because you know you're living right there where you know where our land is so yeah there was uh relatives from all spectrums all colors there and you know just right from that opening ceremony even though we're on zoom you could feel that medicine all the way out here in montana and i'm like trying to hurry up and you know type it on the zoom chat like you could you really could and they had white bison's hoop of a thousand eagle feathers there and you know opened up with kateri don Quayus's daughter speaking and mike duncan's giving her a gift and oh it was just really beautiful that's great that's great so tell us about the specific what workshops did you go to so i try to hit pretty much all of them even when you know two were going on at once i kind of go back and forth a bit um it was on the wova app and so um you could watch it on zoom or you could actually watch it on the app Mm. And so I was able to kind of go back and forth quite a bit, but, um, you know, one that stuck out a lot definitely was, um, Native Wellness is ACEs. They did a rundown on ACEs Oh. and, Mm -hmm. you know, all of these individuals are the, are indigenous recovery pioneers. And they were so giving, like they offered up slides, they, you know, connecting with them on that app. They're, they're, I messaged a couple of them because I am friends with a few of them on, well, actually all of them on mm-hmm. Facebook. Um, and so mm-hmm. just very grateful for the support. And so the ACEs, I just want to say, mm-hmm. you know, they were doing a rundown of, Theta Nubras has been in the recovery world, you know, I want to say 30 years. I may be off by a year or so, a few years. Mm-hmm. 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 You know, she's been doing this for a while. And she went, her slides were like going through, you know, women, women's rights, you know, from the burning the bras to mm-hmm. setting up for our, 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 you know, African-American relatives to Native relatives to recovery, Mm -hmm. which is all of our relatives. And, you know, yes, yes, we have this epidemic of the residential schools going on. Yes, we do have intergenerational historical trauma in our DNA and not just Natives. Mm -hmm. All have been through that. And so I really loved her saying pretty much, and these are my words interpreting what she said, but do we want to be, you know, do we want to be the ones that, oh gosh, they went through so much, or do we want to be those ones that goes above mm. and, and start, you know, our healing through our indigenous right. ways and beliefs. Right, right. And really connecting that to being natural trauma-informed ways of living and healing. Mm -hmm. And those words really spoke to me, along with Al Pooley's presentation on the importance of a positive attitude, the effects that your attitude has, Mm -hmm. you know, no matter who, and him too, he's big on like, no matter who you are, what background, Mm -hmm. the importance of your attitude our attitudes are strong you know like Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we can either come in make a room or break a room Mm. all of us in recovery we're gifted we're gifted individuals i believe and so that really spoke to me because you know as somebody working on myself every day trying to constant and I screw up, I make a lot of mistakes, but it's, it's funny how 
when you're working on yourself, how certain things come up and it talks to you. And that definitely did talk to me. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when we're open to things, right? I mean, when we're open as opposed to being closed off to it, right? And you're working on things. So you're opening, you know, yourself up to the world and the vulnerability and all of that. And yeah, I mean, all these opportunities are floating out there. Can you talk a little bit, you mentioned it and then you kind of went on, but can you talk about that? You said, I felt it even through Zoom. Talk about that, that feeling. And, and, and I'm asking you because when you said that, I, I was relating to my own experience of being at Alternatives Conference, the big recovery conference, the first year I went and that feeling. Now I was in person, but share, share your, your, your experience with that. You're on Zoom, you're at the um, Healing Together conference. It's your first time going. What did you feel there? Just a lot of power, empowerment, strength, connection. You know, just knowing that all the people on there are on a similar journey. And, you know, knowing that you, that hoop of a thousand eagle feathers and all, you know, all these ceremonial pieces, you know, a lot of elders and ancestors. And I just imagined all of our ancestors there with us, you know, because in our way, when you do an acknowledgement, we're acknowledging that land. And then within that land is those ancestors that lived and derived from there. And by doing that, each and every one of us is bringing our ancestors, acknowledging that. And so I just imagined, you know, we're not necessarily supposed to talk about what goes on within our lodges, but that's what I see. I see all those spirits. I see all of those grandfathers standing up and standing strong and being with us on our, our red road. And so it's like, whether I was uh, watching this virtually or whether I was there, like I was feeling that good medicine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's great. Yeah, I, um, like I said, when I, this is, you know, this is 10 years ago, first time I went to alternatives, I didn't really know what to expect. And uh, I was there with, I had actually been there for a few days, SAMHSA grantees had a meeting and they invited some of us. We weren't actually a grant, grantee that year, <clears throat> but they were inviting um, other states were invited. And so anyway, it was a, it was part of it was networking and part of it was learning from grantees and all of that. And, and that was a great experience. They had us divided by states and, you know, so anyway, I went to all that and then I just, I will never forget that feeling. It started, it was a Wednesday night. I'm pretty sure it was Wednesday night. And it started with a presentation and a dinner. And I think it was like Dan Fisher was doing the presentation. And, but anyway, I, I remember, you know, I'd been at this thing for a few days, like, okay. And I guess I, you know, I wasn't really prepared for that emotional sort of feeling. And I remember walking through the doors in this great big room with all these tables and it was like 700 people and it was kind of overwhelming the feeling right because it's like these are my people these are all just what you just said these are people who are experiencing the same thing they're on the same journey as I am right now yes and and I will never forget that feeling just I didn't even interact with anybody yet. Just walking in the room, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, it was like, and then sitting down, I was there with one of our board members and we sat, at, at, we just picked a table, like, you know, cause you could, you could sit anywhere, but you know, it was just packed and we just sat at a table with strangers and, and instantly we were friends. Right. And we started, they were telling us about what they were doing and we were telling about what we were doing. And then the whole thing started, the presentation and the dinner and the whole, and yeah, you hear these words from 
you know, people who were the leaders at, at, at the time and they're, and it was like, it's, it's really, it was very emotional for me and it's stuck with me. I mean, all these years and I went to other alternative conference and I never quite had that same exact feeling. You know, I never had that exact feeling of these are my people, you know, these are all people in recovery, you know. That's beautiful. And I felt that same emotional connection and just an overwhelming in a good way. Mm -hmm. And yes, I feel like I grew. Like, I feel like I'm more on solid ground than I was before I went. But just listening to Jim, the developer of Montana's Peer Network, built the best practices like you are our indigenous or our indigenous <laughs> indigenous folks love you too but I mean you are our our recovery pioneer up here in Montana and so just hearing you going through that experience is it's huge yeah 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 well that that was the early days and <clears throat> We had just started out. That was in the fall of 2011, and the company was just brand new. I mean, it was just, you know, I started in June. And so that was, you know, it wasn't even six months in. And we had this great opportunity. I mean, SAMHSA paid for myself and a couple board members to go to, to be a part of that, to be a part of what was happening. And then they used to always, <clears throat> schedule it so SAMHSA would have their part and then it would lead right into the big conference and so um, you know we paid for the conference part but SAMHSA paid to get us out there you know and back and yeah it was just yeah what what a feeling that was because I think it's hard when you're doing like yourself I mean you're pioneering things here in Montana and it's like you're 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 connected to people but these are people in other states doing what you're doing right and so it gets like magnified and there's a certain energy and their words are very similar to the words you would use and it's like you know right like all of that just yeah i mean i'll, I'll never forget that night <clears throat> i can't even remember all the workshops i went to but i can just as i'm talking about it i can picture that evening um, and just how impactful that really was and why conferences are important, mm. right? Like this was the healing together. This was the first time that the four of these entities, Native American entities came together, correct? Yes. And from what I heard, the beginning of more to come and it was just really powerful, you know, because getting into the recovery field kind of being naive about how things work i realized really quick especially here locally it's just there's not as much collaboration as there should be it's there's a lot of division there's a lot of racing to get this contract or whatever it may be and to see ones that are making it and have been doing this work as long as these folks have been doing this work. I mean, looking at Al Pooley, he's been doing, he's been doing that work. He, I think he said for over 16 years. And before that he was doing similar work, but he's going in the prisons, but he's also him and his family are training, which I was grateful to be able to take one of their trainings. The fathers are sacred, mothers are sacred. And, you know, they don't get federal funding simply because they use words like creator and God. And, and so he spoke on tribal communities and tribal organizations and, you know, people that have tribal uh, members that are working within their organizations and agencies are are the ones buying it and just just hearing like their stories of making it mm -hmm. and, sure 
it was really, it was really powerful. And yeah, and man, Superman did an amazing performance. I was lucky enough to meet uh, Christian Parrish. He came and did our graduation through the Eighth Judicial Drug and Veterans Court. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so, um, I mean, he's just kicking ass out there. Mm -hmm. And when he got uh, introduced, they're like, here's to the hardest working indigenous rapper out there. And man, I swear that's the truth because you'll see on his feed on social media, he's like out on this date, next day you see him on TV, you know, it's like, it's awesome to see someone from Montana make it. Uh, him, Theta Newbrest, and Jillian Joseph are all originally from Montana, so that's pretty cool too. Oh wow! Yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Well, maybe uh, maybe next year. I don't. Are they going to have it in California again, or are they going to move it around? Did they say? They said they're going to have it again, but they don't know if they're going to have it in California. And then they were asking and we were all like putting all of our states on there. And right. so right. we don't know quite yet, um, but they're, yeah, that'd be cool to have a, vent, have a vendor table or something. Yeah. Well, I was just thinking where I was going with that was I was just thinking about, you know, the, uh, you know, being in person, you know, and <clears throat> as we continue to move through COVID and things are opening up and it would, you know, that would be quite the experience to be able to, you know, participate in person. So. Yes. And that's what I was thinking the whole time because, you know, our, our organization, our main players are so like intrigued with this culture. And um, I was like, man, I even sent Amanda a link because I got three tickets mm -hmm. and really we only used the one, but I sent Amanda the link because I know she really, she really likes it. But there was also opportunities for other organizations that are working within recovery and doing peer support and recovery coaching and doing the work that these organizations train people to do we're coming in there and doing presentations. Winona Stevens, oh. she was on our wellness mm -hmm. panel mm -hmm. back in December. Mm -hmm. Her and her organization, they do criminal justice uh, recovery coaching. And um, she does the white bison where you're down recovery coaching. And so- nice that trickled into the work she does there and they did a presentation on criminal justice work and these are uh relatives that are you know four years out of being incarcerated and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know they're making it why nona uh, messaged me on messenger she's like are you at the conference and, and i said i'm just watching it virtually and mm -hmm. So I was glad that she let me know that they're getting ready to go on so I mm -hmm. could watch. And I'm like, that could be us. It could be you. That that could be you. I mean, that could be you, Leah, you know. I mean, with them, you know, with them. And shout out to Winona as well. She's she's an amazing human being and we'll have to figure out a, a way to get that her and her crew uh, on one of our podcasts as well yeah for sure that'd be a great podcast yeah yeah all right well thank you for informing us about the healing together conference and uh if you're looking if you're listening to this and you, you're looking for information remind remind us what is the website that they should look at again leah it is native dads network and that's um, just as I said it, spelt just as I said it, or it's Native Dads Network.org. And on there still has the information of the Healing Together Conference and has all the other organizations' uh, information. 
and then as well as um, you know again white bison uh, native american fathers and families association as well as native wellness institute excellent so the listener uh go check that out thank you so much for tuning in to recovery talks podcast with montana's peer network and leah thanks really for telling us all about it your passion comes through <laughs> well um it's an honor to always be on here with you and be uh, working side by side with you jim so great thank you thank you to the listener all right we're signing off recovery works and recovery is possible recovery works and recovery is possible recovery works Recovery is possible. Recovery is possible. (laughs) Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery is possible.